Welcome to Your Aged Care Compass podcast. Join us to find out how to support your older loved ones at home. We're going to help you make sense of Australia's aged care system. We talk about legal and financial considerations for ageing and how chronic health conditions impact your older loved ones' well-being. And we share real life stories of where it went wrong for people and how we got them back on track. Welcome to episode 11 of your Aged Care Compass podcast. Today, we're talking about package management options, self-managed versus fully or traditional managed. One of the questions we're often asked by family members caring for older loved ones is, can I self-manage mum or dad or my wife or husband's home care package? There's no one size fits all answer. It depends on your own situation. Factors that influence if you self-manage or choose a fully managed provider include time, how much time you can devote to sourcing your own support workers and clinicians, how easy or not is it to source your own support workers, particularly if you live in regional or rural Australia, and your ability to recognise your loved one's changing needs and demonstrate to the provider so that the care plan can be adjusted and services changed accordingly. So when you're allocated a home care package, you have to sign up with the provider, whether you choose to self-manage or not. Why is this, Coral? Shell, it's because compliance is a big part of the aged care sector and the government wants to know that those funds or that home care package subsidy is being spent in accordance with the program guidelines. So providers assume the responsibility for reporting and compliance and this is not negotiable. So when a person is allocated their home care package, they must choose a provider and enter into a service agreement with the chosen provider. Well, let's take a look at how fully managed and self-managed works. Right, yeah. So fully managed, also known as managed or traditionally managed, means that the provider does everything for you. Self-management, on the other hand, means that you sort everything yourself. There's also a hybrid of these two models, which is called supported self-managed. And this is where you would choose self-management as an option, but you would have some support from a coordinator, which may or may not be time limited. So, you know, you may have a coordinator for three months and you would be demonstrating to the provider in this time that you could actually self-manage the home care package and then you would step down and perhaps it would become self-managed rather than supported self-managed and this is something that we're starting to see come through more and more with providers is there is a lot of responsibility on providers with regards to compliance and if providers are signing people up for self-management and these people cannot actually coordinate Mm. their own support, it becomes a real risk for the provider and they can get into a bit of trouble with the Quality and Safety Commission. So some providers now, we're seeing a little bit more that they will encourage people into that middle ground, that that self the supported self-management before yeah. they'll allow people to take on that that full responsibility of self-management. So with fully managed providers, they will allocate a care coordinator or a care manager to your loved one's file. And this care coordinator or manager will be the person who sources support workers or carers cleaners, tradespeople, and makes referrals to clinicians and actions the recommendation from the clinician assessment, and that might be purchases or modifications. With self-management, you have to source your own carers and your own cleaners, tradespeople, and clinicians. So the difference really is in the workload, is that right? Essentially, yes. So the fully managed provider will do all the work for you, And they'll charge fees to cover for this work, whereas the self-managed providers, they charge fees too, but the fees are generally less because you're doing all the legwork. All right. So just briefly, Coral, what are the fees that providers can charge? So there's two fees, Shell. There's package management and care management. 
Now, providers are allowed to charge no more than combined 35% of the value of the home care package with these two fees. Right. I typically see fully managed providers charging around 27 to 30% in combined package management and care management. And with self-managed providers, it's usually much lower, around about 15% of the value of the package in fees. Okay. And are there any other considerations when thinking about which model to choose? Well, I've already touched on time and the ability to source your own workers' shelf, but digital connectedness is really important too because That's your communication mode with your provider. So you need to be comfortable with emailing your provider and you might have to get comfortable with logging into their portal to upload invoices as well. Yep. Continuity of workers is another big consideration. So if people live in rural and remote locations and they need consistency with their carers, you would really need to consider you know, are you able to source enough carers to cover sick leave or holidays, recreational type leave that your carers might need to take? Yeah, just touching on that point, speaking from my experience, I worked with a couple who lived uh, about an hour and a half outside of a capital city. They decided that self-management would be great for the husband and The wife was able to do the digital connectedness. She was quite confident with every other aspect. But what stopped them in their tracks was there simply weren't any carers. They were living in a, well, they were actually living outside a rural town. So there was already travel involved Mm. and it just became too hard. They could not access carers. So in the end, to cover the situation, they ended up going to a traditional provider where they had a roster of carers coming through. And that was the one thing, that ability to find the support workers was the one thing that stopped them from self-management. Yeah, yep. I totally can relate to that. Recently, we've talked, touched on previously, mum being in hospital and I support mum to self-manage her home care package. So coming out of hospital a couple of weeks ago, mum's needs have changed a little bit and she does now need some carers. Well, in fact, even before she went into hospital, I was thinking about this. But during that time, I actually, I was at my wit's end Mm. and I live in Cairns in far north Queensland pretty decent sized city lots of people there are lots of carers and people willing to be support workers so I went on to different platforms and looked at getting carers for mum and I couldn't get anyone I couldn't get anyone who was interested it was really frustrating and what I've done for mum uh, and self-management is really I really like it but I'm also the first to say that it's not for everybody because Mm -hmm. with dad we had him with a fully managed provider and self-management just would not have been an option for us because we just did not have the capacity with dad. His provider was doing a great job of providing the support and the carers and responding Mm. to dad's changing needs. But we were also involved to such a degree that we were so tired and exhausted all the time and taking on that aspect of it, like to source around carers, honestly, it would have been like the straw that broke the camel's back. So yeah. For dad, self-management was not achievable, but with mum, it is achievable. And yeah, getting carers for mum has been a real challenge for me. Yeah. What I've done is mum is with her self-managed provider who are wonderful. And what we're doing now, because I couldn't get a carer through these uh, workforce platforms, I've gone to another provider And we've subcontracted. So mum's self-managed provider subcontracts to another provider who has a local office here and who has carers working locally. So we use the carers from another provider, but mum's self-managed provider pays for those carers. And that was the only way that I could do it. So When you're outside one of our big cities and the more remote your location, it does add more challenges to making self-management achievable. 
but I guess if people are considering it, I'd definitely say look into it because what I like about self-management is that it gives mum or really me and mum a lot more choice and flexibility and when her needs change, I see that on the day and I can respond to that very quickly. I'm not reliant on a care manager under a fully managed model having to report to them and then having a discussion with them about what mum's change needs are, potentially updating her care plan and then having a chat about, well, what are we going to do about this? I don't have the time to be having those kind of conversations. So cutting out that middle layer of discussion with me being able to arrange the different supports Mm. that mum needs to update the provider and to get that support in place quickly is what really attracts me to self-management yep and choice again we're not left into using the tradespeople or the clinicians that are aligned with a fully managed provider if mum needs a physiotherapist or an exercise physiologist or an occupational therapist I just go and source them myself and then I connect them to the provider and then the provider pays for their invoice My experience is that if you go through a fully managed provider and you need a clinician like that, the fully managed provider will then refer to, they only have typically a small uh, choice, a small group of allied health practices or businesses that they refer Mm. to. And what that means then is the wait time tends to be longer. So if someone needs an occupational therapist, They can sort that for you, but it's going to take weeks. And for me and with mum's situation, we don't have weeks. I want to get that stuff sorted now when she needs it and affect those changes according to her change needs. Yeah. And the other thing, Coral, too, is when you've got that care manager, they're not just looking after one client. They've got a number of clients, so their time is already spread thin. Whereas in your case, you've got mum. And you know mum so well, you can go, okay, this has changed. I know this isn't normal or this is out of the realms of what usually happens. Yeah. So it does. It does allow you to be so much more flexible. But as we've already discussed, and funnily enough, Coral, I'm in Perth. I hear it from people in Perth as well. I can't get carers. Yeah. So it's not even just the domain of regional and rural areas. It's a shortage of support workers I think across the whole industry yeah so it really comes back to what a person's needs are what and how they want to use their package funding as well as time and digital connectedness and ability to source workers it's all of that so what I sometimes see across social media that kind of it does bother me Mm. is that people are encouraging other people to go with self-management because it's cheaper And it should not come down to the dollar value. The biggest thing for me is, are you able to do this? Are you able to carry this workload for your older loved one? For me, that's the most important consideration to make when you're choosing self-management or fully managed for your service provision. Yeah, it does. It has to come down to quality outcomes. Yep. Well, thanks for that, Coral. I think that's given us a fairly good rundown on home care package management models. So we will leave it here for today and we look forward to chatting to everyone again next week. See you then. Hey, care community. Thanks for listening to this episode. So you never miss a show, make sure you subscribe to our podcast. If you'd like to know more about what we do, head to our website see me acn.com.au